Welcome back to Fox 13 News live at noon. Today, the American Lung Association released their state of the air report for 2022. They found that despite decades of progress on cleaning up sources of air pollution, more than 40% of Americans are living in places with failing grades for unhealthy levels of particle pollution and or ozone. Parts of the report rank the most polluted cities. Salt Lake City, Provo, Orem metro areas ranked 10th in the country by their measures. We want to get some reaction to the report's findings. Joining us live in studio to go in depth on this, Dr. Brian Mensch with Physicians for a Healthy Environment. Thank you for being with us. Always appreciate your expertise in this. Um, let's, uh, y y jumping off from that report, we were talking before going on air here, and you're saying, while our winter inversions have gotten better, we were doing better in that regard, overall, things are getting a little worse. There are some real climate effects going on here. Yeah. Our winters are a little less severe, a little less snow, mm -hmm. and a little less cold. And so that creates a fewer of those winter inversions that we're historically known for and that people uh, have been identifying as the main cause of concern for air pollution for a long time. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, now some things are going on also related to the climate that are also uh, aggravating our air pollution problems. Our ozone levels are increasing. Ozone is a chemical reaction in the atmosphere that's catalyzed by heat. Yeah. And as the atmosphere warms up, more ozone is created. Mm -hmm. So our ozone levels are steadily on the rise. And ozone is a little trickier because uh, when, when we have the particulate pollution, we see it. We have a sense that it's there, but with ozone, it's it's not as visible. Ozone's a, a colorless, odorless gas, yeah. but it's what's people, what people commonly refer to as, or known as smog. Mm -hmm. But ozone is uh, historically a problem during our summertime, yeah. and that's steadily getting worse. And so we're trying to find ways to reduce that. But in addition to ozone, we're also seeing a lot more frequent dust storms and a lot more wildfire pollution. And in Utah, we're seeing, we've seen dust storms this week. And in fact, today two, two we're seeing some, some dust blowing up yeah. from the south. Uh, what's, what's the big concern with dust? There's more than one, right? Well, dust is, is a particulate air pollution just like a lot of other types of particulate air pollution. In addition to these tiny particles that are toxic to inhale, the dust, depending on its source, also has things like heavy metals in it. Mm -hmm. If it's dust from the lake bed of the Great Salt Lake, it has arsenic and undoubtedly mercury and other heavy metals. If it's uh, from southern Utah, it may also include things like radioactive isotopes that are still in the soil from the Nevada nuclear testing era of 70, 80 years ago. Yeah, and, and we're seeing more of that. Uh, you mentioned with the, with the winds coming through southern Utah, there was some fire damage there that's turned up through some soil um, as a result that's, uh, that's causing more dust to blow. But also the Great Salt Lake, as you mentioned, um, that's a climate effect plus, a, plus how we use our water uh, has impacted. Obviously, public policy affects the level of the Great Salt Lake. And mm -hmm. as we divert more of the inlets to the Great Salt Lake, the Great Salt Lake shrinks. But as temperatures warm and precipitation falls, that's another major contributor to the shrinking of the Great Salt Lake. So not only is that a problem for the lake itself, for the industries that depend on the lake, for, for tourism, I mean, it's the iconic natural resource of this state. Mm -hmm. But it's also a serious health hazard. Yeah. And, and now we're seeing on average in the last few years, 10 to 15 at least of these dust storm events every year, whereas 15 years ago, we really didn't have any. And then wildfires, you know, we've, we've seen such big ones in California and our, our winds just uh, carry them right here. A fire doesn't have to be in Utah for us to feel the impact. Last year, uh, Salt Lake City had a couple of days where they had the worst air pollution in the entire world. Mm. And that was because we're downwind of a lot of these massive wildfires on the West Coast. Now, we also have our own wildfires. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we know that the climate crisis is contributing to the propensity for wildfires. That trend is likely to continue. So we're, um, it's a little bit discouraging to realize that that's going to be an ongoing source of pollution. and It'll probably get, get steadily worse. One of the things that's worth noting about wildfire pollution is that wood smoke, mm -hmm. whether it's burned in your fireplace or burned in a forest, is probably the most toxic type of pollution the average person ever inhales. Wow. You know, we've been talking about these these big issues that uh, we could all pay more attention to on a policy level, whether it's with climate, with water use, those sorts of things. But let, now talk to the folks at home um, who are thinking, okay, 
what do I do? The, the wildfire season comes, all this smoke blows in. Do I stay in my house? Um, what do I do in my house? So what, what do you tell them? Well, we need, we need to be engaged in good public policy. We need to elect politicians that take this serious issue seriously. On a personal level, uh, there are some things you can do to decrease your exposure to particulate pollution, and that is uh, home air purifiers. Mm -hmm. we so those actually work? They actually do work. They actually not only work to capture particulates, and ex including the very small particulates, which are the most dangerous, but they also reduce the transmission of viruses, like COVID. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're encouraging people to use room air purifiers in their homes, in their businesses, mm -hmm. schools, and so forth. Uh, we also encourage people to reduce all the known sources of pollution, which are basically all related to fossil fuel combustion. Mm -hmm. If you can tolerate a little higher temperature in your house during the summer, it reduces air conditioning demand. If you can tolerate a little lower temperature in the winter, it reduces the demand on your furnace. So, uh, if you can carpool, mm -hmm. ride a bike, avoid uh, transportation by one car, one person's sort of model, mm -hmm. uh, that helps. All of those things we all know about uh, are very helpful, not only on the local scale, but the national and the global scale. All right, Dr. Brian Manchal, we always appreciate leaning on your expertise uh, in talking about air pollution, so thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me.